Welcome back guys. In the previous video, we talked about how to design work van shelving. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the actual construction process of how to build some really nice plywood shelving for your work van or work trailer. I'm about 95% of the way done here on my new van. It's coming together really nicely. Originally, we had even thought about actually um, taking all the tools out and pulling all the shelves out and actually showing you how this goes in piece by piece. But I've spent so much time on this, there is no way I'm taking these shelves out now. So I'm going to kind of walk you through the process uh, step by step of how to build this out, um, where to start, where you finish, and everything in between. I've got some really cool tricks to show you I'm very proud of too. For example, right up here. See this Milwaukee crate locked in place, pops right out. So stuff like that, I'm really happy with. I'm gonna show you how I did that in this video. So some people might want to purchase steel van shelving. Um, as a carpenter, there's not a chance on earth I would go with steel van shelving. I think you have way more uh, ability to customize and adapt to what you need whenever you use plywood shelving. With steel, it's just, it's heavy, it's locked in, it's not easy to manipulate. Um, so that's why I go with plywood shelving. It's up to you though. There are some steel systems that you can pre-purchase on the market, but they've never really tempted me. Now, one of the things you have to decide before you start building anything is what kind of plywood are you gonna use for your shelving? I have used AC plywood, which is, which is a raw, um, kind of marine grade, heavy duty plywood. Very strong, works good, doesn't look good over time. You go in, you touch it with dirty hands, you get grease on it, it doesn't look great. What I've found that I like to use is pre-finished cabinet plywood. I go to Menards and buy it. Whenever I did my first van, you could buy it for 50 bucks a sheet. Now doing my second van, it's up to about 80 bucks a sheet. But the reason I like it, it's pre-finished so it doesn't get dirty. Um, the dust wipes right off and it just kind of looks good um, for the long haul. Another thing that I did a little bit different on this van, Menards actually had two grades of plywood. One was a standard maple cabinet grade. One was like some kind of industrial grade. Anyways, this is radi radiata plywood. You've probably heard of radiata pine, pine which is like a uh, super fast growth soft wood. That's what this plywood is. You might think, well, why would you buy that? The reason I bought it was because it is about half of the weight of standard plywood. So if I would pick up one sheet of the one brand of pre-finish that they had in the store, it literally felt like it weighed twice as much as this stuff. So being that this is a work van, I wanna reduce the weight as much as possible. I decided to give it a shot. It is soft. It doesn't hold a screw uh, as well as you know a denser plywood, but I find that it's plenty adequate um, for what I'm doing, I just add more screws and it's just really lightweight. So I went with that. So let's just pretend you've got a blank slate in your van. You've got wide open spaces. Where do you even begin to outfit this thing with shelving? You want to start with what I call your verticals. This would be the vertical pieces that go the length up and down the whole way. That's where I like to start you will need to scribe them to the side walls of your van. If you're not a carpenter, that means that you need to make the back side of these vertical pieces. You've got to cut that so that it conforms to the side of the van. At least that's what I did. That's what I would recommend doing. So that's the place to start. And what I do is I start by making one piece, scribing it, and that becomes my template piece and then on all my other pieces, I just use my template piece, trace it on, cut them out. So after you've got a handful of those cut out, 
then you're ready to start putting things together and kind of start screwing things together, putting some horizontal dividers in. With this particular van build out, I started off by making my verticals and then I would install the first two verticals on both sides of the wheel well first and uh, kind of get a horizontal piece fastened in between there. And then I knew as I backed up over here that these spaces were gonna be 24 inches apart. So it was pretty easy then uh, after I had these vertical pieces in to take a long piece of plywood up top and fasten that with pocket hole screws and just kind of keep going from there. Same thing over on this side. Started here and here on both sides of the wheel well, also knowing that I wanted a 24 inch space here and kind of just start putting things together. So as you start, you'll get these vertical pieces in place with the spacing that you want, probably connected with your long top piece up here, and then you're gonna start filling in the shelves wherever you want them. So next thing that you wanna consider whenever how to build all this stuff and fasten it together is how are you gonna attach it all? And I can tell you I've outfitted four or five different work vans or trailers now. Pocket hole joinery is the way to go in my opinion. It's fast and it's easy to adjust things in the future. So what I do is I put a bunch of pocket holes on the underside of my shelves. On these vertical dividers, I've got pocket holes up here that attach the vertical pieces into the horizontal pieces. I've even got pocket holes going down into the floor so that if I want to screw these vertical pieces down into my rigid rubber floor so that they don't move, I can do that. So my advice, use a lot of pocket hole screws. It's really easy to adjust things up and down, put things together, it's strong. Even with this um, soft, fast growth plywood, this radiata plywood, um, just put more screws in, more coarse thread screws and it's gonna hold the shelves in just fine. So let's go real quick into the shop. An investment that is well worth making if you are outfitting vehicles very much or you do much carpentry is a Craig Foreman. So outfitting a van or a work trailer, you're gonna be making tons and tons of pocket hole joints. This makes it super fast. So very simple. Um, I cut a piece and you need to make a bunch of pocket holes. <laughs> So in a matter of seconds, we've got all of these pocket holes and uh, it's just a really fast way to do this. At this point, we've got all of our shelving built. We've got our tools kind of fitted into it, but how do you actually fasten these plywood shelves to the side of your van so that they don't just fall over going down the road? So on these Ford Transit, Ford has what they call upfitter points welded into the frame and it's basically just a riv nut welded in it's a m8 bolt that you can just um you know attach your shelving into then and bolt it on and if you bought like pre-built uh steel shelving a lot of different companies will customize that to work with these different bolt locations so up here on the top row there's about one, two, three, four, five different upfitter locations where you can bolt it in. And then at about 20 inches off the floor, there's a row of locations as well. So if we come in here, you'll see I've made what I call a stretcher that goes across the back of the cabinet. And what I do is I just measure uh, a board, I pocket hole screw it, I'll insert it in there and screw it into the sides of my vertical pieces. If you want to, for added strength, you can also fasten your shelving into it. I don't always do that because I prefer to be able to move it up and down. Um, but then before you actually screw it in place, you want to mark the location of your upfitter bolt hole, drill that out at about 5 eighths or whatever, and then you can install your M8 bolt and bolt the shelving to the side. 
So I've got everything bolted up here. If you look down here, this is what it looks like before there's a bolt in it. Again, in the previous video, I had whenever I installed the plastic protection on here, I had to note where these locations were and drill those out. That way I had access to those holes. So that is how everything gets bolted in place, but it's extremely sturdy. Um, it's not coming off the walls, uh, it holds everything really well. All right, guys, one of the things that I am most proud of on this van is the design that I came up with to use with my pack outs and my sustainers. As you'll see here, we've got the same width, 24 inches wide, and I've got a pack out here, and then I've also got two sustainers here. And the cool thing about this, if we get up close here and you look at this, these shelves are mortised out for the feet of the pack outs as well as the sustainers. So if you look at the bottom of these boxes, you've got these little feet that are on there. So you can drop these in and they will not move or in the sense they will not fall off the shelf. I've used this method for the, I mean, years, several years with these sustainers. I've never had one come off the shelf. It works really well. So they can be locked in with this space with two sustainers or take these off here. Again, I've got another shelf right up here. So if I want to double these up, everything is modular and fits together. Now if for the camera, I could actually get it to fall in place. There we go. <laughs> So grabbing another pack out, again, you'll see it's all mortised out on that side. And then we can come over here to this side if I wanna move it around, drop it right in place and it's locked in, it's not gonna go anywhere. So I am thrilled with that design. Let's go in the shop and I'll show you how I did that. Actually real quick, before we head out to the shop, I wanna show you this uh, space up above. This is a, done a little bit different it's for the pack out crates. So you'll see, I just dropped that in. You cannot get that thing out of there. It actually locks in place. So if I wanna pull this out, I can do that. But you'll see this little tab here, it actually locks in place. So if you come and look up here, I had to make an extra mortise for these feet and then for that locking tab up here, but with this narrower portion of the uh, the van, these boxes are not as deep as the full size pack outs. So this was a great area to be able to store um, these pack out crates. And as you can see, like it just barely fits in here. It's like perfectly flush. So great use of space. I'm really happy with how that turned out. This here is a piece of shelving that I'm using in the van. So as you can see, it's got mortises and it's all cut out and everything. So how did I go about doing that? Um, basically, you know, you just got to copy the bottom of your toolbox, whether that's a pack out or a sustainer. I don't even know what's in this pack out, but I'm turning it upside down. Um, we've got all these feet on here. So we need to make a template that matches all these feet. So what I did was I just started ripping strips of wood. So I started with these long strips, got them in between. Then I started filling in with CA glue, that's super glue, and just putting smaller pieces in between here until I basically had a template. So just drops right on there. We got ourselves a template. Then I took that template, put it on top of another piece of plywood that you see here and made myself another template. Now you'll notice here, we've got a couple extra spots on this template. And those are the Festool sustainer feet areas. So. This is my pack out template. And then I made a separate one uh, for the Festool feet. What I ended up with was this master template. So all I do is whenever I'm ready to route a shelf, I get my shelf here, 
This is 24 inches wide. That's my golden number, as I've talked about. Set it down on top of here and take a pin nailer, pin nail it on the four corners, and then route it out. Let me grab my router quick, wherever it's hiding at. So what I used to route it out was uh, this kind of large three blade uh, guide bearing template bit, hogs it out pretty good. Um, I will say that the, this DeWalt DW618 router with the dust port right here, it is fantastic for this type of work because you are making a ton of sawdust, a ton, and it keeps everything right underneath here. So you can hook this up to the vacuum. So I basically just turn on my vacuum and leave it running, plop that on top of there, and that way you're not eating sawdust. I don't know what it is about this particular radiata, radiata, whatever you call it, plywood, but I was sneezing. I mean, I was having a complete allergic reaction to this stuff. I've never had it happen before with any other kind of wood. It was crazy, but my, I do not agree with this stuff at all. So the dust collection was essential. Next, let's talk about drawers. We're in my old van and I made these drawers and they have worked really well. You actually have a ton of storage in these things. Haven't decided yet if I'm gonna actually add drawers to my new van or not. Um, I like these because they optimize the space really well. They fill out the whole cavity um, besides basically you know an inch and a quarter on both sides. So you can get a lot of stuff in them. If we go to my new van, in the new van, I have not installed any drawers with slides yet. I'm thinking for now, I'm gonna try and just get by with uh, the pack out drawers, but you can see you don't get nearly as much efficiency of space usage with these. I'm probably three inches in here on the sides, um, maybe even four inches. So not nearly as efficient on space, but you get the ad advantage. You don't have to spend time building the drawers, building the latch mechanisms. And if I decide I don't want drawers here and I'd rather have drawers over there, I can just grab this and move it somewhere else. Whereas the drawer style that I have in my other van is much more permanent and it takes more labor to build it. So we're on to the last topic I wanted to hit on, and that is like, okay, you get these tools in the van, how are you actually gonna hold them in place so that they don't go flying everywhere whenever you take a corner hard? Few different ways you can do that. So obviously the way that I've done it with these mortised shelves works great for holding boxes in place. I'm really happy with that. And I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but like a golden rule for me is if at all possible, I want to be able to place the tool and then not have to do anything else. So like with this framing nailer, I want to be able to put it in place and not have it, not have to do anything else. I don't want to have to strap it down, lock anything in, anything like that. Sometimes it's still going to be necessary that you need to use some bungee straps and, and things like that. But if at all possible, try and make it so that you can just put your tools away and then you're done. So like with this tool bag, I've got a piece of nosing about an inch and a half tall on this shelf here. I've had this tool bag for many years and I know that that piece of nosing will keep the tool bag in place so I can just drop it in. Up here, you'll notice again, I've got another piece of nosing up here on my track saw area, so I can pull these out, put it back in, and it's gonna stay there. I could probably secure that a little bit better so it doesn't have quite as much movement. Here, this circular saw, you know, put it in, and it locks in place, it's not gonna go anywhere. That's the ideal goal. Um, but with things like these large pack out stacks, you gotta use a, a strap of some kind to lock them in place. You can't have them falling over. Um, ladders, 
I haven't figured out a better way than bungee straps yet to kind of hold those in place. If we come around here, looking here at my level storage, again, that principle of being able to just drop something in place and not having to do anything else. Uh, I made these little blocks where whenever I'm done, slides right over the top and then it locks in. It can't fall, fall off. Again, right here, drop it in. It can't go anywhere. Uh, sledgehammer, I'm done with it. Drop it in, it can't go anywhere. But then if you turn around over here, uh, I've got these saw horses, just bought these. Gonna try them out, not sure if I like them yet or not. Um, we've got the, the bungee strap, so. That's just uh, something, sometimes you have to use it, but I try and avoid the bungee strap as much as possible. Um, over here, you'll notice I've got my dolly. This ladder is actually elevated so that I can slide my dolly out without actually having to move the ladder. It's those small details that make all the difference. You'll see it actually is sliding underneath of the ladder. So I can just kick that back there if I want it. And whenever I want the ladder, I can pull that off. So a lot of little details in a van. I've found that that last 5% of the van build out is the hardest because you're just done but it makes all the difference in the world going that extra mile with those little details. Um, you'll really enjoy working out of it if you put that upfront investment time in on the front end. I hope you guys have enjoyed this series. I've really enjoyed building out this van, but I'm very tired of it also. It's been a ton of work. I'm ready to get back to work. Um, just got a little bit more to do here. And then on the old van, I've also got some more work to do to get that fully ready so that my new guy has just a great vehicle to work out of to maximize efficiency. But thanks for watching. Hope you got value from these videos. Let me know what you do different. Drop me a comment, hit that like button, subscribe if you aren't a subscriber already, we'd love to have you and we'll see you on the next one.